basically what we're going to do here is recreate a uh, Glock 17 test. Uh, we have some tinfoil on standby. Yo dudes, this is Matt V2099 and today I'm here with the Glock 20. So I'm constantly asked to do Glock 20 videos. A few of you know I have a Glock 20. I actually have a playlist for Glock 20 videos. But, um, so I'll give you a little, little story for those of you who don't know what a Glock 20 is. So a Glock 20 is a 10 millimeter auto pistol. The 10 millimeter was invented in the early 80s for TSA agents. And, um, so this was a, this is a big powerful round, like more powerful than a 45 ACP. There was a major problem with this round, like TSA operators just couldn't handle how powerful it was and it was too easy to limp wrist this gun. So, what happened, this is about, I don't know, 1981 or 1979, so what happened is, what they did is they chopped the, uh, the 10 millimeter down and created the 40 short and weak. And um, at the time, the 40 short and weak was extremely cutting edge technology. Anybody could operate it operate with it. Um, physics wasn't at the point yet where they, they, could, they knew kinematics. So everybody thought this was the most amazing uh, freaking round in the world. You can actually hunt with this pistol in some states, certain game. Uh, if you get the right cartridges, they're extremely powerful. They can take down game. This is my self-defense uh, woods gun for like bears and stuff. So basically what we're going to do here is recreate a uh, Glock 17 test. Uh, we have some tinfoil on standby. Tinfoil actually defeated the Glock 17. Uh, you just wrap one layer of tinfoil around the Glock and it's done. It doesn't matter. Th that little bit of tinfoil keeps the slide from racking enough to operate. So we're going to wrap this thing. First we're going to wrap it up with a couple wraps. Cut a hole for this and then shoot it. Hey Matt, can I operate with you? No, get out of here Skeeter! So we're going to expertly apply some tin foil. Got my K-Bar. K-Bar brand K-Bar. Everybody, I, can't, I get at least five questions a day, what knife am I operating with? K-Bar brand K-Bar. This is the first, we're going to cover the muzzle, but we're going to create a hole. Yeah. We are going to chop a hole for the muzzle so it's not obstructed. Oops, we can't have one little flap over the muzzle. It might blow up the gun. This is Glock smithing at its finest. Okay, let's get another piece up here. Yep, we're going to wrap it about right, right here like so. Yeah, we're going to put one more piece back here. Because one piece totally disabled a Glock 17. So I'm going to try two pieces to see if that'll disable a Glock 20. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Bling, bling. Better... Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Okay, now here's the problem we have. What I have in every video, everybody's like, oh my god, you need to clear your weapon before you do whatever you need to do to it. Well, now how am I going to get my ammos in there? And it defeats the purpose. We're gonna... That's the 40 short and weak. I have shot 40 Smith & Wesson out of a 10 millimeter. You can check that video out if you want. Okay, so this is where we have to be careful. This gun is hot. Um, and if you follow the four, Basic rules of firearm safety, you'll be fine. Okay. Alright dudes, this is two pieces of tinfoil around the Glock 20. Let's see if the Glock 20 will defeat it, or the tinfoil will disable the Glock. Okay, dude, so the front of the Glock tinfoil came off. Um, the slide had no problem busting through the back. The 9mm couldn't do that. It wasn't strong enough to bust through the rear end of the tinfoil. So it busted a hole in there. That's pretty impressive. I think our problem was an, uh, a lack of ejection. I think this here round just... This was screwed up enough to start covering the ejection port. You can see that. Um, I'm actually impressed. I, I figured that the two pieces of tinfoil would stop the Glock quite handily. Okay, we're going to put one layer real quick and give it a test. All the, all the crying nerds should be gone by now. But if you are a crying nerd, please speak up right now. I want to hear what you got to say. Please tell me what a dumbass I am. Tell me how wrong I am. It pays to be wrong on the internet. Okay, we're going to just basically wrap this 
in one piece. Note that we're staying behind the muzzle. I'm not pointing at anything that we want to destroy. There's a big dirt pile to my left here I'm pointing into. Big dirt piles over there. We're in a very safe location for operating. So we essentially have one piece wrapped around it. I'm going to cut a hole for the bullet to eject from. Glock 17, nine millimeter. This was enough to stop it. The slide does not have enough force to break the tin foil. All right, dudes, we're gonna uh, test fire the, we're gonna scientifically test fire the Glock 20, following all the four rules of uh, firearm safety here. The only problem is the Glock might randomly, randomly blow up on me because it's a Glock, but I mean, gotta live life, brah. Oh, to the snap. What just happened? One piece of tin foil stopped the Glock 20. Look at that. It slowed it down just enough so it wouldn't chamber the next round. Or the spent shell casing didn't eject fast enough it slowed down this thing or something. Oh, it didn't go all the way back. See, that round didn't get picked up by the slide. So these are, these are some crazy mad scientific results. Uh, we're just gonna leave it at that. And um, I think this asked more questions than it answered. Uh, thanks for watching. Matt out. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, I would love to hear what you have to say in the form of a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video and tell me what other types of videos you would like to see. And if you want to drop a like or a dislike, that's also huge and I would appreciate it. Thank you and Matt B out.